We're back. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? Welcome to a new season of Cash Creek after the game. Larry Beal along with Mike Schumann. A lot of excitement, a lot of energy. Week one of the college football season featuring some really good matchups at the top. And a lot of questions locally, especially at Stanford Shoe. Well, what's going on with the play calling? David Shaw under siege after one game. And Cal, can they become a contender in the Pac-12? Well, they lit up Grambling State. Here we go. Yeah, we'll start with Cal because, frankly, they're better highlights. Yeah. <laughs> Stanford game, we'll get to that in That's a few minutes. minutes. Yeah. Uh, this is year three for Coach Sonny Dykes and his quarterback, Jared Goff. After going 1-11, and then 5-7, and seven, Time to start winning, right? And it helps when you, you start with a cupcake on the schedule, and that is Grambling State. Great band, though. All right, Cal offense averaged over 38 points a game last year. They double that number today. Opening possession, Jared Goff, simple screen pass to Daniel Lasco. And he does the rest down the right side. Gain of 20 yards. A few plays later. He'll cap the drive, four yards to the touchdown. 7 nothing. Cal, less than two minutes in. Now, Cal will get the ball right back. And Goff, look at the protection here, all sorts of time. But his pass goes through the hands of Bryce Treggs, intercepted by Nicholas Peoples. They've got Peoples at Grambling State. <laughs> Grambling goes nowhere. Uh, Goff right back to Treggs, down the middle, deep ball, in a double coverage. And Treggs does a nice job of coming back for the football. Gain of 50 down to the Tigers' five-yard line. So on second and goal, they give it to Vic and Wary, And he's fighting and struggling to get to the goal line. Stripped. Fumble. Tigers recovered. They reviewed it, and uh, that was a fumble. It was a good call, and the band has reason to play. All right. This should have been a big play for Grambling. Two receivers top of the screen. Just one corner, but the Tigers wide out. Not on the same page as Jonathan Williams, intercepted by Cameron Walker. Trots into the end zone for a 14-0 Cal lead. That's a gift. All right. That's defensive coordinator Art Coffin in his second season. Bears much behind defense. Four interceptions today. This one by Darius Allensworth. A couple early gimme interceptions from Grambling State. And Cal taking advantage. They would start to pour it on. A seven-play, 43-yard drive. Goff, wow. Kenny Lawler to make it 21-0. Grambling was playing man-to-man -man on Lawler, and he was split right, and he just runs a little slant here, and they just got torched with this all game long. 19-yard touchdown, 28-0 California. All right, from bad to worse for the Tigers. Williams backtracking in his own end zone, throws it up, trying to prevent the safety, not wise. Picked off by Devontae Downs, he dives into the end zone. 35-0 Cal after one quarter of play. All right, more of the same on Cal's first possession of the second quarter. Goff looking left, finding Trevor Davis for a gain of 32 yards. Man, he puts it right on the money. At the Grambling 33-yard line, Dykes goes for it on fourth and seven. Trex beats a man, gain of 25 yards in a first down. El Cap the eighth place, 75-yard drive. Goff to Lawler for the third time. Look left, throw right, 16 yards, 42-0 Bears. Now, Daniel Lasco started, and then Cal goes with a healthy dose of Kalfani Muhammad after a 22-yard carry up the gut here for 42, down at the Grambling 5. Eight carries, 92 yards for Muhammad, leading to a Bears field goal. So could Grambling get on the board before halftime? The answer would be no, because last year's backup quarterback, Luke Rubenzer, now the backup safety. Nice play on the ball there. That was his first career interception. Way to go, Luke. So Goff back to work with a pump fake and then throws underneath to Bug Rivera. He's the nephew of uh, Carolina Panthers coach Ron Rivera. Bug. Bug. Bug is 5'8", 185, hence the nickname Bug. Given name is Vincent. And Bug would set up and wary <laughs> from two yards out. The Bears dominating 52 to nothing at halftime. Yard game, but All right, golf done after going 22 of 32 for 309 yards in the first 30. The final 30 minutes belong to backup Chase Forrest, redshirt freshman from modern day on the kids' first play. He's going deep. Rivera wide open, but he bobbles it. Ball pops up, intercepted oh, on, by Bob. Peoples. His second pick of the game. So once again, well, Bug, you got to catch that, Bug. Yeah, exactly. uh, the Tigers' offense goes nowhere. Forrest from the shotgun to freshman Kanawai Noah from Hawaii out of Punahou. 21-yard gain. Then Jeffrey Copperich capping the drive. 59-0. Could we be witnessing a shutout by the much maligned Cal Bear defense? Ooh. Third and 14, Forrest, a little screen pass. Copperich, I'll tell you what, Cal's got a lot of running backs. That's a gain to 24, then second and goal. And this is their fourth string running back, Trey Watson, six yards for the score, 66 nothing, <laughs> California. All right, at this point, I think the remaining fans of Berkeley wouldn't mind seeing Grambling get on the board. 
Trevin Cherry in for Williams says Dominique Alik for a gain of 37 yards. Tigers driving 53 yards in over four minutes. Complete it with Cherry to Brandon Birdsong uncovered over the middle. Shutout is over 66 to 7. They'd actually score on back to back drives. This next one, just one play. Martez Carter takes a handoff, pulls a little Houdini act here, somehow escapes multiple tackles. See ya, 90 yards down the sideline for six. Score now 66 to 14. The comeback is on. <laughs> yeah, or not. <laughs> Forrest, again, great protection. Look at him. Rivera. Wow. The bug has got it in stride. 63 yards and the dive. Touchdown. touchdown. He's in there. Forrest goes 10 of 17 for 162 and a touchdown in the second half. So, you know, young guy gets some playing time and a blowout. And the final is 73 to 14. Wow. Cal by 59. They were favored by 43 and a half, Shu. Kind of hard to take that bet. For entertainment purposes only. <laughs> uh, Goff and Forrest oh, sorry. both had nice days. Well, you know. Uh, uh, you could have figured they were going to put up some points in this game. The exactly. Bears scored four touchdowns through the air, another four on the ground. All right, look at the numbers. 471 yards passing between Goff and Forrest. Bears racked up 661 yards of total offense, more than double of the Tigers. Cal, no problems moving the ball. 36 first downs to just 10 for the Tigers. And after the game, Rick Kwan caught up with head coach Sonny Dykes. Well, congratulations, Coach. I guess you couldn't write a better script for a season opener like this. What pleased you most about today's victory? Well, I thought our guys really competed hard, and, and you know, we played pretty well early in the ball game. We had three turnovers, got to get some things cleaned up, um, you know, let them get a couple of late touchdowns. But I thought our guys competed hard. We're really into the game. We're focused, and uh, we know we have to get a whole lot better, but it was a good start. 73 points is great, but it came against a team like Grambling State, which is not a powerhouse. So how do you keep this uh, win in perspective? Well, just what you said, you have to put it in perspective, and our guys have to understand that we know uh, that it's not going to get any easier from here. You know, the, the, the opponents are going to get more and more difficult as the season progresses, and our guys get that. But, you know, we needed to build some confidence, particularly defensively, and I think that uh, when you go out and you perform like the guys played today, particularly our first defense, you know, they gain a lot of confidence from that. You know, we scored two defensive touchdowns and, and really did a good job and made some plays, so I think we can build on it. 73 points, the most the second most ever in the modern era for Cal. Is it because you're coaching wide receivers now that they score that many points? Yeah, without a doubt. No, no <laughs> doubt about that, Rick. Yeah, that goes without saying. <laughs> now, you had to be pleased with uh, Jared Goff. Uh, he only played a first one half, but uh, looked pretty good at that. Yeah, no, I thought Jared did some good things. I thought, you know, first and foremost, I thought he took care of the football. You know, he threw an interception. It was a tip ball. Um, but other than that, I thought he played clean, thought he made good decisions. And, you know, he got hit a couple of times. We knew they were going to zero blitz us some, and he got the ball out well and took those hits and, and made, made good decisions, and, you know, I thought did a great job leading our offense. Uh, despite the final outcome, I'm sure you always see things that we could have done a little bit better. It, what comes to mind? Yeah, the, the turnovers. We, we know the turnovers. We gave up a big play on defense, gave up a 90-yard run at the end, and, uh, we've got to get that stuff cleaned up. We had a penalty or two early that we can't we can't afford to have. So there's a lot of things to learn from. You know, a lot of young players played for us, and they'll learn a tremendous amount from the film, and we'll be able to correct a lot of things. And um, I think it'll make us a better football team. So Sonny's got to be feeling pretty good. Plus, uh, I'm told on a personal note, he went to lunch recently with Rick Juan. Mm. Uh, Rick did not mention who picked up the tab. I don't know. Rick might it might I, have been Dutch a Dutch treat kind of thing where Rick goes, I don't want to risk any NCAA violations. That's I might true, keep the wallet true. in here. But uh, I put my money on Coach Dykes. So, so. <laughs> I'm picking up the, and I was teasing Coach Dykes at the media day. He's coaching wide receivers. And I said, if you need any help and you get tired late in the year, I'm available. But I think he did a pretty good job today. Well, we'll see how things go when yeah. they face some tougher opposition. Yeah, Are you truly available? Is this uh, breaking news? Do you want to coach? Would you uh, coach? I wouldn't know because I'm under contract here. <laughs> Let's well, not get ahead of ourselves. Spoken, so. spoken like a scared I'm man. I'm off on but... Thursdays and Fridays, though. So I could, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a, that is a very, very generous <laughs> offer. Yeah. Uh, I know USC fans might disagree with this, but when you look at Jared Goff, that might be the best quarterback, not only in the Pac-12 this season, but perhaps among the best in the country. Well, I don't think there's any question. He said today he made some throws he would not have made the past two years, and the game has really slowed down for him. He's going to put up Heisman Trophy numbers this season, but if Cal can't put up a winning record, Goff's going to go unnoticed. As a freshman, he was learning the game. Last year, he started to feel comfortable. This year, he's ready to bust out. He has every throw. He has touch, and his command of the offense and reading defenses is off the charts. He bulked up this year. He's a little stronger. He broke 15 school records last year, and he's said to become the all-time 
all-time passing leader in Cal history. He's thrown for 7,481 yards and 53 wow. touchdowns in just two years. That's the most in Pac-12 history, and you see some of these throws just right on the money. Rick Kwan caught up with Jared Goff after today's game. Well, Jared, congratulations on winning the season opener. 73 points out there. What pleased you most about the offense today? I think just coming out fast and uh, starting fast and um, being really sharp from the get-go is probably the best thing. I think we've wanted to do that in the past and haven't been as good as we wanted to, to be at that. And today we were really good at that. And um, I'm just happy with everyone. The offensive line, running backs, receivers are great. No matter who you score 73 points against, it has to help the team's confidence. Absolutely, yeah. No, we want to score a lot of points in our games. and. You know, 73 is what we scored today, and uh, I think it was, it was good to see the, the second string guys do well and get out there and score, and um, the guys that don't get to play as much, it's definitely good to see when that happens. There was a lot made of uh, you being able to make the calls, the changes at the line this year. How do you like having that yeah. additional freedom? It's fun. It's, it's good. It's, 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 uh, definitely makes it a lot easier for me to change stuff out there and uh, put us in the right play and um, run stuff that I feel comfortable with and that the receivers feel comfortable with. Your third year here, um, what do you see most that you've grown on, grown as a player? I think it's just really slowed down for me. I mean, it's um, from freshman years last year and then this year it's slowed down a lot. I'm able to see the field a lot better and able to make uh, better decisions. You know, uh, everybody's talking about you as a possible Heisman Trophy candidate. Uh, you're on the cover of all the magazines and stuff like that. How are you handling all this publicity and, and can I say pressure? Yeah, you know, I'm not really thinking about it. I just I want to win games with this team. I don't want to do anything else. And everything else will come with winning and uh, I'm not concerned about it right now. Well, I, I got to say, Coach Schumann, uh, first of all, <laughs> he's going to be a, a may, may not be a dark horse Heisman right, candidate, but right. he had 309 yards of passing in one half. If Cal really wanted to run the numbers up, I mean, he could have had way more. But you said this, I remember when you saw him as a freshman, right. after just a couple games, you said he throws a ball just like Joe Montana. And I thought you were insane. Right. But he reminds me so much with his accuracy, the way he read defenses, he pre-reads defenses. And, and if you'll notice, his players get the ball on time so they can run after the catch. That's something, for instance, Colin Kaepernick, he waits till you open to throw it, and a lot of guys don't get a run after the catch. So he's, uh, and I think Cal's public relations department, too, they need to pump him up, too, if they want to make him a Heisman candidate. That's kind of part of the deal when you're doing something like that. Cal not known for that, you know, not that their department. Well, they haven't had candidates lacking. either. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it'd be nice to see them go ahead and make a push for him. And because he's going to put up some numbers, like you said, 300 yards in one half. Yeah. I mean, he could have easily had 500 yards passing tonight. Kyle McRae will get it done. Oh, yeah. Kyle, if anybody will, Cal will. Right. Uh, but, you know, the one thing with him, 6'4", listed to like 205. Right. You can see he needs to gain some weight. You put, if he's at 6'4", 220, 225, right. that's a first round draft pick in the NFL well, right no there. Question. There's no question. And then about uh, that. programs always kind of lie about your weight. You know, if he's too 205, he's probably about 195, 200, right. you know, so. So, uh, Cal fans hoping that he, he comes back next year and doesn't yes. go NFL draft. Right. So we'll see how that shakes out. Next up for Cal, another home game. This is going to be a little bit tougher. Little the bit. Bears are going to host San Diego State. The Aztecs coming to town next Saturday afternoon, a 2 o'clock kickoff in Berkeley.